All right. So we wanted to do a special podcast about the adventure we just went on um, in Argentina. And uh, this is this was kind of a, a special trip um, because it was the first time we'd ever gone and fished this way. And so we took Brig with us. Um, Curtis and I have been to Argentina a whole bunch of times. It's an awesome country. We speak the language. We, t- we kind of take that for granted. Brig, Brig went... Not prepared. I said like 10 words the whole trip. No, what were, what were your two. three favorite words that you learned while we were there? Mate. Mm. Bingo. That means I'm hungry. All right. Parna. Parna. That means. You said it halfway decent. No, that's good. And then. What was the one we kept? Dorado. Dorado. <laughs> yeah. Did I mess it up? We're trying to get no, Greg, Greg's you're pronunciation. Close dialed but uh, you, when you have three spanish speakers yelling at you on the boat it doesn't quite work <laughs> i know so anyway we we flew in, through atlanta this time got into buenos aires um because you fly overnight we usually get seats with a little bit extra leg room because one of us is not built like the others what? That's how it goes. It makes it Say comfy. something. I didn't say, say it. No, something. I didn't say it. I don't anything. appreciate your smug looks. I didn't even give a look. I was straight face. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, sorry. We'll try not to fight too much. <laughs> anyway, we uh, we got to Buenos Aires. We flew out the very same day to Corrientes, which is a province just north. Well, not just north, but a bit north. And it borders Paraguay. And does Brazil border Corrientes on the other side? Anyway, it's way up in that little corner. If you, look, if you mm-hmm. see Argentina, there's like a little finger that goes up goes to Iguazu yeah. Falls. And that's part of the Parana River is, forms the border of several countries there. So, um, And just to give like an idea of where this is, I think people, because we know, we've gone to Patagonia region a number of times. Um, which we do have a trip coming up in February, end of February, if you want to go to yes. Patagonia. Yes, email me, cheech at flyfishfood.com. We have a few open spots for this trip. Cheech will be, which flyfishfood.com. Yeah, hit us up. We've, we've had some openings open up. That's a fun one. But so um, the mm-hmm. latitude south, we're equal here in Salt Lake. Um so it would be the same as if you were to go from here to, say, Florida to fish, which is where the Paraná River is in mm-hmm. northern Argentina. So it's pretty far like yeah. from Patagonia, but um, subtropical. Mm-hmm. So we were there in October, which is spring for southern hemisphere. Uh, it was 80s. A few yeah, the weather was, was phenomenal. So good. Brig and um, I were chasing toads and iguanas and... We were doing the poison toad stuff. Poison yeah. toads. That's kind of like reminds me when you picked up the armadillo. Didn't oh, realize yeah. they carry leprosy. Yeah. Oh no way. <laughs> no, that's what they everyone carry says. Leprosy. No, there in Argentina, they 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 put armadillos in pens and they eat. They them. eat them. Yeah. It's like a oh. a thing. They so, eat them. Yeah. Gotcha. But anyway, this uh, <laughs> this Paraná River. So we we flew into Corrientes. And uh, we drove to the lodge, which is right on the river. So yeah, really it's cool awesome. like, location. I was taking full advantage of hammocks and, and Diet Cokes just coming as fast as they could. And uh, But this river is insane. So it was a giant river. And so the guide comes out and he said, look at those trees all the way on the other side. You see that? We said, yeah. He's like, that's not the other side. That's just an island. Yeah. So he said it was uh, four well, kilometers across. Then we went around that island. Yeah. And he said, see that other side? That's still another island. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in that whole section where we were, I think physically you can only see from one side to the other in like two places. Two places, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenally, I mean, it's bigger than anything I've ever seen. So we, we calculated that it runs about 700,000 cubic feet per second. Yeah. So now keep in mind that you know, the South Fork of the Snake, which is a pretty ripping river here in, in the western U.S., gets up, gets up to like 15,000, 20, 20,000 yeah. 20, on a real ripping river. 16's rig- average. Like. Yeah. And so 700,000. And the Mississippi River, on average, is 500,000. Yeah. So 
we get out on this uh, this river and we had to try to find fish. But um, and before we get too far into this, and we are going to do this this trip again on October fourteenth through the twenty first of twenty twenty three. So we do have a lot of interest in that one. So if you're interested, get with us right now. And if that one's full, we might be able to find another week for you. Uh, we just won't be going down, but um, but absolutely. we will on the October one. Yeah, in October so, we will go down again. Yeah. It's um, phenomenal. Like so, yeah. We on day one, it was kind of a it's kind of a a rough day. Like it took us twenty hours before we actually hooked a fish yeah, in the boat. We, so. Cast a lot, um, and the guide kind of set us up to understand you're casting a lot. Dorado aren't typically known to just chase flies willy nilly. It's um, they're, you know, it's a kind of like a muskie or something where you've got a yeah. lot of casting before you get something to chase. Um, the nice thing about this, say versus say a Bolivia jungle trip, is the two locations that we were at. And we'll talk about them. Both were fished from boats, like. Fast yeah. boat, skiff kind of things. Uh, yeah. Super convenient. Like yeah. you literally would wake up in the morning, go get your breakfast at the lodge. You have nice rooms there right on the banks of the river. Meet the guide in the morning, and then you walk onto the dock with your gear, and you're off. And yeah. super convenient. One thing I really liked about this trip is we didn't have to pack waders and boots. Oh, yeah. And the flies, like when we go trout fishing, it's like, okay, I got to have dry fly streamers. Yeah. And it's it's like just box like, after box. We're just, I could have gotten by with a box this big or, you yeah. know, a 12-inch box with just a, you know, five yeah. or six flies. And we kind of got our flies mapped out next year. We're, yeah. we're dialing it in. Yeah. And yeah it, we learned a lot, but it was, it was a blast. But, yeah, so this, this river, like we went up and down the river um, one day on the second day after lunch. <coughs> we <coughs> we started seeing all these rise forms out in the river and we realized that those were sabalo now in spanish that means tarpon for most of the place yeah. but these were not, <laughs> not tarpon they were more like a mullet yeah. so these dorado will chase you know five pound mullet even even like a 10 pound dorado they're still hunting down these pretty big bait fish and, and these uh, bait fish will kind of school up on top of the water they were mating while we were there and uh, the Dorado would bust up in between all of them or like through their, their circle and like bite them in half. So that's how they hunt. They, they find a fish they want to eat. They don't swallow it whole like most predators. They, they just like freaking bite rip, chunks out rip of it. Yeah, you're just watching chunks of massive bait fish just floating down the river. Yeah. yeah. Just because they just razor sharp ripped. teeth. It was crazy. And then all of a sudden like you'd be... You'd be watching these clusters of sawalo. You could see the disturbances, and then all of a sudden, this freaking yellow missile gets <laughs> comes up thrown. It just and they're pandemonium. fast and they are mean. One yeah. of the clips we have is a. I don't know if you've seen. It. I know Curtis has one of the. Yeah. You see a small dorado go come up at the sawalo, and then you see a big dorado come and smash the smaller one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, like just mayhem. It, it's something else. Yeah. I mean, dog eat there dog. were thousands and thousands of these sawalo that were in their little mating ritual. And, and the speaking drop, of the mating rituals, sound, what's the sound they make, Brig? Well, it's like the most bizarre sound. The whole time we were fishing, I thought there was a helicopter, a chopper over my over top of our head. We have some of that in the video. We'll, we'll yeah, drop yeah, it, but. yeah. We have way good audio of no, that, but and it the, sounds just like a chopper, like a life light, and. I just looked at Lucas, our guide, and said, Lucas, what is that? Like, what's that sound? And he's just, <laughs> he had no, no, ways, no way else to say it. And he just said, Sabalo having sex. And I was like, <laughs> I thought I was just joking. Just like, just like, she, I can say that. Yeah, I but. Can, I can say a, that. This is a family show. And so I was just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Ten minutes later, I was like, no, really, Lucas, what is that? He's like, no, really, that's that's exactly what it is. And he's like, look behind you and. Sure enough, yeah. it just it sounds like you a chopper, kind of... so loud, so many of them, and they just. But the creepiest sound were the howler monkeys. The howler monkeys, that they're cool. Like a horror show. So Brig and I tried to do a howler monkey sound on the boat. Sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes louder, and we were trying to figure <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a cough. Dude, I can't do howler monkeys. And we were trying to figure out what the monkey sounded like because he's like, yeah, we'll see monkeys. We'll hear monkeys. And so the whole time we're like, 
there was bird ton of different <laughs> t- yeah ton of different no. types of birds and so we're like what do these things sound like and i was like lucas what do the monkeys sound like like are we hearing them and he's like yeah we've heard a bunch of monkeys and i was like what do you is and then i heard a bird go off and it kind of sounded like a monkey i was like was that it he's like oh no no no, no. you'll know yeah he's like and so then we keep fishing about an hour later he says that's the that's the sound of the howler monkey Yes, yeah, and it yeah. sounds like a jet. jet engine starting up. It sounded to me more like water going down a drain. It was like, yeah, it didn't seem natural. No, not yeah. at all. It yeah. was weird. And like they were far away, but then there was the one right on the edge of the jungle that was just so loud. Yeah. Though so we asked him about those, and and one of the guys said that those howler monkeys eat nothing but plant matter, so they have very low calorie intake. That's why their their calls have to be so low pitch, so that they use very little energy to to call back and forth. But so. they are really good at throwing poop. Yeah, they you, are. Yeah, he said if you yeah, get too close, said. he's like, we can't get too close to them because they'll start still, they're throwing all crap at us. How did I miss that? I totally forgot. <laughs> you guys, let's go. <laughs> we gotta find these monkeys, dude. How, dude? Would that not be something you could write home about though? Like you got a wild we monkey fishing. that threw poop at you. <laughs> And people just be like, you're an idiot. No, dude. Like, <laughs> how many of your friends could say that? That's true. In the wild. Yeah. One time. Got in into Argentina, a poop fight with a monkey. Freaking howler monkey. Hit me with a slider. You know? <laughs> Guy had some spin, too. Just broke, snapped it off. <laughs> just splattered you. That'd be disgusting. Yeah. Fishing day over. No, dude. Not you at say all. Maybe just, just jump in the water. Jump and in. I bet it wouldn't even stick. With all the piranhas. All right, uh, this is getting off topic. Anyway, so we did the Paraná River three days. Um, they kind of know, like Kurt said, it's it's not like super fast, fast fishing there, but the chances of catching big fish are definitely there. Um, the first ever Dorado I caught in my whole life after hearing about him for 25 years because I, I served a church mission in Argentina, and I'd hear people talk about these, but I caught a roughly 30-pound Dorado on an eight weight with a 12 inch fly that I had just made up like the week before <laughs> that swam great. And Happ- it was just absolute pandemonium. And it, it was happened insane. to look like a Sabalo. Yeah. Like your fly was like the <clears throat> yeah. exact coloration. So like a, a really I, small Sabalo. Yeah. But yeah. a big fly. Yeah, big like fly. A 10 inch fly, 12 inch. I don't know. It was pretty big. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, that, that was super, super cool. And then we finally, I think we dialed in some locations. I think if we would have been there a few more days, we could have yeah. really caught a bunch. Yeah. Um, well, I think at first, uh, so just kind of my understanding was he he was really focusing a little bit more on like bigger size right. and some of the holding locations there, which right. is which is fine. It ended up working out great. Yeah. Um, there was a couple of other guys fishing in the other boat. It's kind of the same days we yeah. were. Um, they caught, I, I think the first day they caught, you know, a couple each or one, yeah. one or two each where we didn't, you know, we came up empty handed on the first day, <clears throat> but anyway, we ended up doing just fine um, yeah. overall at Cheech's big one was the biggest one of the trip. And that was our first. Yeah, it was the first ever one we caught. Brigham hook, or he had a giant follow later that day. That I think uh, it made our guide choke on his coca leaves. Yeah. <laughs> and now, all out. let's talk this about is... that, dude. Let's talk about the coca leaves because well, I don't even know how First to... off, I, I want to comment on the chase real quick. Okay. That's when you guys talk, and Lucas mentioned this multiple times, we, we were always worried about the what I was. Always worried about the fly because in trout fishing, you're always worried about how the fly looks. If it looks yeah. bad, the fish probably won't or doesn't look like it, the actual bug. Fish won't eat it. I had my cast hit a bush, ripped like a wad of leaves off with the hook, landed, and I was stripping in. I was just stripping in quick so I could get the leaves off, and this thing came up. It's huge. At the yeah, just yeah. came up after the fly with all the leaves. He on said it. it's probably the biggest one he's seen in the river. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. And he just like was like, Whoa! had to spit them all out in the water. His coca leaves. So it, like when someone takes a, a pinch of like Copenhagen. They get a little pinch or maybe even a big pinch. We're talking about like softball wad of coca leaves. Just, you know, 
constantly one, changing it out. Yeah, one cheek is way bigger than the other. Have you been to their website? Who? Set Fly Fishing website? Yeah. And Lucas is just front and center yeah, with Luke. a big old <laughs> wad of coca leaves <laughs> in his cheek. So anyway. That's but, how they roll there. Oh, yeah. So good three days on the Paraná. <clears throat> what we did after that was we, uh, we drove down to a little tiny airport that was, uh, when I say airport, it was a, a field. field. And a Cessna 172 came Classic. and picked us up. We jumped in there. The pilot was small and I was large. And there are some funny pictures. <laughs> I'll throw them up. Yeah. Just post them. I'll just post them. Throw, throw up. Get it? It's a dad joke? <laughs> no. He's oh, pretty good. <laughs> All right. So... Anyway, we jump on this plane. We flew over a place called the Ibera Wetlands. Now, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and it's actually called the Ibera Provincial Reserve, and it's a it's a it's a, like a national park that's protected. And set fly fishing. The guys that we go down with worked with them to like their their permits. So. I think it's divided into four sectors, and only four boats per day per sector can go on this this uh, wetland. Now, the other thing is it's single hook, barbless fly fishing only. So, how cool is that? You know, where you have a country that has this resource, and it's it's like seven thousand square miles. It's huge. It's yeah. giant. So imagine the the Florida Everglades on steroids, full instead of like largemouth bass or whatever full of these full of like piranhas but mostly dorado got sabalo in there cayman cayman per, oh, did you capybara say piranha? yeah piranhas capybaras everywhere carpinchos carpinchos yeah spiders lots of spiders spiders dragonflies did you guys ever look up oh yeah when i told you to look up dragonflies. Dra that dragonflies hatch was yeah. nuts so what, what we did there is we <clears throat> we flew into this place, we jump on a much smaller skiff, and we go across this just, it looks like you're going full speed and just like a field of grass. And then you get up to the corner and there's like this little tiny, you know, <laughs> tiny uh, like a race track. channel that you take these boats in. And then about every 400 yards, they'd have to find open water, stop the boat, throw it in reverse to Chop to the get all the weeds out <laughs> but uh it was cool like there we we did both kind of like more primitive camping where you're in a tent with a cot i mean primitive but yeah you're, 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 you're not uh, indoors, glamping essentially but glamping. you're in you're in the yeah. national park basically yeah uh, camping saying these little kind of one of the spots was a little shack kind of thing yeah i mean it's nice for what you're getting there you <clears throat> certainly don't feel like you're uh in survival mode they're still nice yeah. the food's awesome the food is always Just phenomenal phenomenal like, even though you're out in a camp like you're you're eating in this big wooden pavilion and they're bringing you hors d'oeuvres and appetizers yeah. and desserts and coca light coca comun coca comun yeah there you go <laughs> see i learned that one so anyway but uh the the first day in the marsh was you know it was all right but uh the next two days is where the pandemonium hit. We we finally found a, a good spot. And I think in those two days, how many fish do you think we each caught? Like 12, 15? I don't mm -hmm. know. It seemed yeah, like so a bunch. It, it was a good number. Like yeah. Lucas was saying, we're <clears throat> probably a little above average on, or yeah. a fair bit above average on numbers. Yeah. Um, we did catch a couple of big ones there. Yeah. Um, which isn't as yeah. common as maybe the Paraná River. Yeah, but, Curtis got a 20, 22 pounder as a giant fish. Yeah. And it, they're biggest uh, that they had seen in the wetlands. Yeah, he's is probably one of the biggest ones there. We need to kind of give the the play by play on that. The blow, yeah, the blow by blow. It was just like the fact that that <laughs> fish ended up in your hands was insanity. It was a team effort. We so the the net that Lucas had we had been catching fish and netting them. It started to fatigue in the middle, and so it was one of the little arms was kind of broken away. <clears throat> and so this, I threw into this area, and these fish, they like you, it's so violent, the, the fish hit is so violent, but they don't, you, you can't assume that they're hooked. Like you have to literally 
just drive that hook into him. So strip set, strip set, strip set. And I think I did three hard as I could yank strip sets until I felt like he was on there. And in fact, I think the first one missed like almost entirely, but he came back. Um, and then it's just hooked and going nuts. They, they're almost all of them will go airborne. Um, you can see the whole hit, like they're, they're so big and so aggressive that you can see the whole thing. And so vibrant. Yeah. Like, and they're, yeah, they're gold. It's that's like bright, bright Lucas gold. tried to express how gold they were to us. Yeah. He's like, it's the most it gorgeous it fish you'll ever see. And then you see it and you're just like, and just like oh my goodness. Brighter than gold. Yeah. And the fish in the, in the reserve were more colored up than the yeah. fish in the river. Yeah. But. And just crazy. So anyway, I'm fighting this fish and he went on a couple runs and I'm, we're getting closer. I have the Orvis H3 and I was really putting some bendo in the rod. <laughs> bendo. And then yeah. all of a sudden the rod exploded. I just remember like almost nailing myself in the face and the rod just exploded. And then I hear Lucas in the back of the boat, hand line, hand line. <sighs> so I'm like, what? So I grab the line, the fly line, and I'm hand lining this 22 pound Dorado that's still full. This, this is all on vinegar. camera. Okay, hold on, Don't let me worry. tell you this, what's going through my is, mind right this now. This is all on camera, okay. by the way, so everyone will be able to see this. Yeah, you'll see this so, in the video. Back a long time ago, one time I uh, screwed up getting a picture of Curtis's nine pound brown <laughs> trout. So that's always been in the back of my mind. So I see this happen, and I've got, imagine like a rising lunker net, right? But the the aluminum had snapped off the net. So yeah. I've got a <laughs> net, and I'm holding it it's by the not, bag it's like It's not this. even one piece hardly. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched like WWE or WWF or even high school wrestling, but I was the referee, and I slid in on my belly, <laughs> free willy style <laughs> and i'm over the front of the boat on my belly curtis is behind me handlining this fish and i've got to somehow net this without getting your hand cut yeah, off yeah so keep in mind these these fish especially the size curtis was caught it could have taken off three fingers in, in one bite <laughs> and i'm just sitting there and just like okay so like half my body's over the boat i attempt to net it once miss it he turns it back around and i net the fish and i just kind of sit up and i'm just like I don't even know. <laughs> what do I you do? You the fish. I go to the back, and Lucas, our guide, is just like sitting here, like, what? What is going on? So he grabs Curtis's monster and pours it over his head. <laughs> but the the craziest fish landing sequence that we've ever had. Yeah, ever it was. Cheech makes it sound like he was all graceful, <laughs> and like that he had the hold of the hoop of the net instantly. But he had he was messing with the net beforehand. He also had the GoPro in one hand because I was trying to How's that not graceful? change out the GoPro <laughs> battery graceful. pack. So I'm messing with that. She has the camera in his hand. Curtis hooks the fish. Then, so I'm like, okay, I'll just worry about the battery later. Grab the GoPro from Cheech. Cheech still has the handle of the net. So it's not like you just had the hoop of the net. You had the handle of the net because it, you're trying to fix it a, beforehand. Yeah. You get, he snaps his rod and then you're like, oh crap. So you, Go over there. You flop onto the front of the boat. You didn't like glide no, like dude. you just. And then <laughs> in the video, you just see the. We couldn't. We didn't know where the handle I'm of the net was. My reality, we you thought live the yours. handle of the net was still on the boat. And I was like, I know what. We can just go dude. back and watch the video and find out where it's at. And we watched the video, and sure enough, as he's flopping onto the front of the boat, you see the handle of the net just. Boink. Fall right into the Dude, the right handle the of the net was not going to do anything for us <laughs> right, for the rest of that right trip. Right into the marshal then, Cheech has the poop of the net. Yeah. Which, well, uh, uh, that worked out for the best oh, anyways, yeah. because the, the handle, handle would have done been, anything. No, been for sure. I'm just saying, you're, then you're just flopping around on the front because you missed it. I was not flopping, yeah. Because you, did you say that part? You yeah, missed it. Yeah, I did. It. I said it. It swims away. <laughs> it was a junk show, Brigham. But you got to give it to me that and I was up there fast. You turn around I was like, what the heck? Curtis turns around and he has a whole wad of fly line in his hands. He's like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. So anyway. It was fast and furious. It was some good teamwork. It was awesome. Um, I was somewhat scared of losing fingers and digits. But I've trained Brigham how to tie all my flies. So yep. he would have he been able to do that for us. So... 
Anyway, that was that was the end. That was the second to last day we fished, right? Did yeah. we fish one more one yeah, more? Yeah, one more day. day after that. So fished another uh half day. So they call this one the combo trip where you do both the Paraná River and the the reserve. Um but yeah, then we we went back to to Corrientes. Um but like <clears throat> going through that marsh like like every you don't know four or five hundred yards you'd see a caiman or a capybara we saw deer we saw how many different species of birds yes oh yeah apparently there are anacondas in there we didn't see any of those those aren't very common but they said if yeah. they're there you'll see them because they're yeah. yellow just like the dorado so you'll yeah. see them in the 12 foot anacondas do that for me isn't that big of a deal but i can see why you're scared yeah yeah <laughs> It's terrifying. It is, I know. If they were like 40-foot anacondas, I could maybe relate. But anyway, we, uh, I mean, we ate, what are some of the food we ate? We ate tons of beef. Good beef. Like homemade pasta on the riverside. Oh, that was really good, the homemade pasta. That was kind of a wild one because we're sitting there eating, just shoving our faces. Like Briggs got double hands. He's not even using silver. Just his face is like a couple inches and just shoveling it into his mouth poor boy anyway but the guide started messing around one of them starts climbing up the tree and we're just like what the heck is going on (laughs) so he comes down and he's covered in ants he's just getting bit he's just freaking out well he's got a plant in his hand and so we found out that he they had spotted like wild white orchids that were growing up in this tree and so i guess he's uh but they're not from yeah. the tree. Yeah. They, so they're little tiny micro they, seeds. They blow in the wind. Yeah. Find purchase on a tree. Grow. Eating whatever they can from the tree. But they're not part of the tree. Yeah. And these are crazy like rare orchids I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's a orchid fanatic. He's an orchider. Orchider. Anyway. So Very that cool. Was cool. Yeah. Um, but like the cool thing is like we've been to like Buenos Aires to other provinces and you know every part of Argentina is so different because you know here you are subtropical where down south in Patagonia you have penguins and glaciers and ice and stuff like that so but anyway um, what was the wildest thing for you Brig this is your first time to Argentina the wildest thing fishing or just well, being just in, in general yeah the whole trip like what you've was never been to argentina if before. you went to tell somebody about the trip what would be the first thing you talk to them about the fish for sure the dorado but that's if i'm not talking to someone about fishing probably the difference in language because like that <clears> language <throat> barrier i had never experienced that before but it's like such a real thing where lucas didn't have it and i didn't have but the cooks like those dudes seem like super cool dudes, and the guys from Southern yeah, Patagonia, yeah. you were Southern like, dude, they were awesome. If they were in the states, they would get along with the guys at the shop. That's what you said to me. Yeah, they'd, yeah. they'd be best friends with all of us. Yeah. So just that, the difference. Not being able to talk to them. Not being able to communicate. And I'm like, I have no idea what they're saying. They they had no idea what I was saying. You guys were laughing at them, and you were laughing at me, and we'd all be we'd they both funny. be straight faced and it's, like it's just great. But that barrier is just such a crazy thing. So yeah, we kind of take it for granted. Yeah, right? it's just like it's not frustrating it, but it's just like. But like, I mean, at least as far as the guides and all the communication when you're there in country, or at least at the lodge, you're fine. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. They're definitely. not used to. It was just other getting f- people that speak Castellano. Yeah, Cheech and I are the uh, yeah. uh, the exception to the rule. It's <laughs> They're like, wait a minute. We met him at the airport. We go back to the airport, and we, he figures out that we speak Spanish in pretty short order. But when we get to the lodge, he gets out of the truck and he goes, the other guy's like, in, in Spanish, he goes, all right, hey guys, everybody, listen up. Be careful what you say. They understand everything. <laughs> so, just like, that's so funny. Yes, we do. Yes, we, we did. So, but, I but think anyway. The other big, the fish though, the fishing in general, like, it was rough. Like people... Like, we didn't realize how rough it was going to be. And I was just like the cameraman just sitting there those first couple days. And, like, Lucas wasn't frustrated, but you could tell he was just like, man, this is rough. Not yeah. catching fish, not having follows, like maybe having a couple follows. Yeah, we had a few follows. But, but yeah. like, it was 
tiring, but the fact that Lucas was so adamant, like, listen, like, he was constantly adamant, like, these fish are huge, and when they hit, he would, like, ca- talk us through it. And when, when you, you need to talk through what happened with your fish, or you're not doing that. No, I could do it. Yeah. Um Because that like, was wild, too. My whole thing, so... I was fishing a Sage R8, nine foot, eight weight. By the way, that rod is like power, power, powerful. And I probably should have been fishing a 10. I think I'm going to take a bigger rod next time. But fishing a 12 inch fly. And the whole time, almost every cast, I'd cast out and I'd strip or I'd stick it under my arm and do the roly poly. And in my mind, every single cast, don't trout set. Don't, don't trout set. set. Don't trout set. <laughs> Because I knew that there was a chance of, of catching them. And, should, and for yeah. me, it was like, I was psyching myself out. Like, you at, at the end of this trip, you will be able to say that you caught a golden Dorado on a fly rod. And that at, after like 16 hours of nothing, you're like, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> so finally, make a good cast. And I'm I'm stripping. And I'm when I strip, I'm stripping my line behind me quite a bit. And I hook, <laughs> I... I they strip set on this fish and immediately the guide starts the boat and he wants to get us away from any structure on the side. Well, I start, the fish starts taking line and I realize my fly line's wrapped around the throttle for the boat. So he, <laughs> the guy jumps up. He's he, like running around because it yeah, was yeah. not only wrapped around the throttle, it was wrapped around the yeah. front of the yeah. console that he had, he threw the line over that. And that's when the fish took off and it yeah. hooked around the throttle. So I'm, I'm like grabbing onto my line. And then finally when he said, okay, 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 I let it go. And it just goes. Zzzz. Anyway. Was um, it was a well, he, I mean, it was fire drill. He, yeah. he was. He knew yeah. what he was you doing. Know, it was go time and this yeah. is what you do. And he does not mess around. Just yeah, barking yeah. orders, getting you to where you need to be. He said, he's going to run one more time. And then the fight's going to be right here at the boat. They're going to try to die. Yeah. You're like, should I reel it in? He's like, no, no, no. He'll do that one more time. And we're like. Okay, he kind of looks like he's tired. I don't know if, and then sure enough, like 10 they seconds They would try later. to go under the boat too. And then, uh, so the guide started banging on the oh, top yeah, of the boat to scare him away. on the boat. But like <laughs> when that fish came in, I'm just, I was just like speechless. I was like shaking and, you know, because it was, it was a really, that was the biggest like fish the biggest I've ever fish. caught on a fly yeah. rod. And it was so crazy yeah. so you guys probably saw the picture of it the fly in its mouth was on a five ot gamakatsu with like a 50 millimeter shank out the back of it with like 10 inches more of feathers so <coughs> so like it was a giant fly and that fish just made it look like like it was tiny <clears throat> well, but that's the other thing is people see that and like we say like in the caption she says 30 pounds and there's hecklers are like okay yeah 30 pounds all right but if anything, I think it was more than 30 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Cheech is huge. Because if I, even if Curtis was holding that fish, but if I was holding that fish, you guys would think it was way more than 30 pounds. That fish was monstrous, but Cheech is just so big. But it even, yeah. it still looks big with yeah. Cheech holding it, but it's it like, just doesn't do it justice. It's like uh, there was a guy on Instagram. He's like, sorry, bud, that's not 30. No way. He's like, unless Cheech is like 6'8 and 350 pounds. I'm like, well, not quite that big, but kind of close. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's one thing that I wanted to drive home is like, you know, on a trout trip, sure, you want to go and catch big numbers and, and you want to want to catch a bunch of fish. This is a, a trip to like check something off your bucket list. Mm-hmm. Um, one to two, one to two of these fish in a day of fishing, for me that would be like yeah, that would still be so awesome. It's kind of like chasing like permit or tarpon or something like that, where yeah. where you know you're you're not going to just go out and slay them all day. Now it, that I mean, said, in, in the marsh, yeah, that did. said, in the marsh we had. We were trading off, and we yeah. were trading off every few minutes. We were catching so many. Yeah. So that day, it was like we got out. It was my turn, and I told Curtis, I'm like, okay, I'm going to fish for one hour. If I don't catch a fish in an hour, then you're up. And then we would have broken yeah. up the day that way. So on minute 56. Yeah, literally, it was literally almost right. Hook a fish. We're all like, oh, yeah, finally. Yeah. And then this this little bay, Curtis gets up, hooks up in 15 minutes yeah then brig gets up and hooks up in like two minutes yeah, yeah. it was yeah and, and then we all just started it was, it was like smoking. after that it was just yeah lights out so so yeah a lot of fun like 
I would say, because we've had a lot of people ask us, you know, is this, would you do this trip again? I mean, obviously we're doing it again. Um, I think for anybody who fly fishes, this has got to be about the top of your yeah. bucket list. Yeah. It, it, it's so such a cool experience. That area of the country and that area of the world is really cool. Um, the fact that you're in this marsh uh, wetlands, that's a protected kind of region. Squatch seems to be Squatch, here, issues. come on, stop barking. But um, yeah, it's it's an insane experience. Like, yeah. hard to describe. You know, and that's one thing when we go down to Patagonia and we love it down there and people say, well, why would you go all the way around the world just to catch trout? Yeah. It's like, well, there are lots of reasons why. But this is a trip where it's like, you will only get this experience in Argentina. Uh, another huge thing about this is like, if if you're fishing, and I, I want to go fish in Bolivia too, it's it's awesome and everything, but if it rains and your river system gets blown out, you're just yeah. screwed Ciao. for a couple of days. This, you know, the Paraná River, it could rain all night and all day. Well, and it, it had been raining it up did, the river. Yeah. 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 Like, like, the Iguazu Falls were almost not a falls. It was so much water going over it. Yeah, So and, and the river, it raised by about three, four feet while we yeah. were there or something like that. So it was raising quite a bit, but still it didn't affect the fishing. And then the wetlands, there was an insane thunderstorm that the night that we were at one of the camps and got up and it's just yeah. part of the course, you know, so... Um, this is this is one where the conditions are are going to be prime most 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 days yeah. that you're there, and uh, you have a real good chance of catching a, a really nice dorado on on this trip. For sure. Well, and like one of the things that we bring to the table too is like you know we Cheech and I both know the culture really well, the language really well. Um, you're going to be fishing with us uh, around. You know, we're, we we kind of swap out locations and and boats and that sort of thing, but. It's a great opportunity, you know, you know, we've been there before now, um, we kind of know the program. Um, so if it's something that, you know, if people are worried, oh, you know, what's it going to be like? You know, we're, we, we've been there, done that, and have super high confidence in set fly fishing. They're, they run such a tight, yeah. tight outfit, or you know, both in the Patagonia uh, areas that we go to, as well as up here in Corrientes. But yeah, and that one thing we'll, we'll talk about the cost as well a little bit because I mean, um, this trip for six days of fishing, seven nights, right? Is that what it, how it works out? Yeah, six days. Um, so six days of fishing, it's going to cost about sixty four hundred bucks. Now that includes all your lodging, all your food. Once we get down to the to the province, right? Um, and like the the accommodations are second to none, like absolutely phenomenal accommodations. And then uh, the only thing that's the variable is, are the flights to Argentina. And those can range anywhere between like thirteen hundred bucks and three grand, depending on how how yeah. you like to fly. So anyway, we, you know, just full transparency. That's that's kind of what a what a trip like this costs. But uh, where it's literally like a bucket list fish and a bucket list location to get up in these wetlands, um, it's definitely worth it. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's something that it's not just, you know, a trout trip here or there. It's, yeah. it's something that you can bring people over and show them the pictures that you got of <laughs> a caiman two feet yeah. from the boat. You know, it's pretty <laughs> amazing. So what else, boys? Brigham? Any other animal sounds that you learned? So what does a carpincho make? I don't even know. Like when Car I hooked that. Like the sound? Yeah. Like when I hooked that one Dorado. Caca, look up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caca. But it jumped. There was one of those capybara, the carpincho yeah. on the on the land that it walked over. Yeah. They Dude. kind of. Uh... Walked right over to the draw, like right to the edge, and was like, "What in the world yeah. is going on?" Then we, when we netted it, it swam they through. They don't give a crap. Yeah, it's monstrous. Yeah. Like cap the capybara barks. Let's see. No way. Yeah. Dude. These make the same sounds as you think a cougar makes. Just, <laughs> rrr, rrr. See? Yeah, there you <laughs> go. We had a friendly one in camp. 
yeah. that uh, walked around the yeah, camp. Yeah, one just hung yeah. out. That one sounded like it said, pooped a lot. Hey! 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 <laughs> hey! Yeah, but that, those are everywhere. They're cool. Super cool. Just hang out, swim around. Yeah. Brigham even ate more than uh, hot dogs and ketchup on this trip. I, I ate more than you. What? Prove it. Like what? You know, I ate way more than you. I would finish my plate every time and look over at you and be like, oh, man. It's not about quantity, oh, dude. It's about trying and enjoying oh, the food. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if I can finish this. I oh. did say that a lot. <laughs> yeah, because guess what? When that they're, food is phenomenal. No, listen. When they're, when they're plating your food, they're giving you the child's portion. They're giving me a freaking human and a half worth <laughs> of food. Straight up, though, right. those steaks that we had the first day, you guys had monster ones. I had a big one. I'm not saying that they Dude, didn't, I, but I had, like, my portion. That was very good. I could have started that was a my country favorite. with that Yours steak, was dude. huge. That was my favorite. Slice. So good, Probably though. like a 21-ounce tomahawk. Oh, yeah. so good. So good. Those chefs are phenomenal. What do you think yeah. of the Argentine beef? Like, you've had legit yeah. Argentine it's, beef. It's good. different, right? Oh, yeah. The one that we had out in the... Uh, marsh the at the shack place the shack it's, yeah it's, just, the, it's like a little house the Entrania? There. cabin the Entrania, yeah yeah that one taste you could taste how wild that yeah that yeah and that's the crazy part is like here in the states it's like that like the tenderness of the steak and like that's what people focus on there it might not be the most tender but it tastes it's the phenomenal yeah, so good yeah 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 like a so, taste you don't you know get here. when you go there Regarding, I mean, the Patagonia one, same thing. These uh, chefs they have there are second to none. And they literally have chefs. That, yeah. Like, it's not just some cook guy throwing yeah. stuff together. They're the, like These full guys on, have been there for like five, seven years yeah. and they like work on these recipes. Oh, it's Yeah, they're delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we have uh, information on our website for any of the trips that we go on that if you want to do the Dorado one next October, I'd say that contact us ASAP. That quick. one, we we already do have uh, a, a number of people uh, signed up, but we'll we still have some more space. And if you want to go to the Patagonia ones, uh, we've got a week um, set apart at the end of February. Yeah, so February fourth through March, or 25th. February February twenty fifth through March fourth. Yeah. And those are fun too. I yeah. mean, again, it's the same awesome. thing. You'll be with us. Uh, we've we know the program. We've been there a number of times. Fishing uh, summer conditions, terrestrials in, in February. Now, the last time we went down, we had guys catch bigger fish than any other trips yeah. that we'd had. Like one guy caught a, like a twenty-seven inch brown trout. And yeah, there's some there's big, big fish, good numbers, yeah. scenery, and the you know the just the conditions that you fish in the areas. It's just insane, right? The, Foothills of the Andy Mount, Andes Mountains. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let us know. I mean, these are really our main focus trips. You know, there's other ones we could go on, but we just love Argentina. We've got them dialed in, I think. And uh, Oh, dude, know. before we go, we got to just tell one more story. Oh. The empty boat. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so. We have that. That's <laughs> that's on the video. That'll today. be in the video. But the, you can tell yeah, it. Yeah, the, the big river. So we see these dudes in this like rickety old canoe and we're thinking that's like death trap on this. And uh, we saw him kind of go to the bank and there's like a little camp set up there and we're going down, we fish a spot, but on our way back up, we see that boat out on the middle, in the middle of the river, just drifting down the river. So we're looking at it, we get up a few more hundred yards and there's this guy just frantically waving his arms. And so we're just like, ah, oh. so we go and uh, we have him jump in our boat. Like getting our boat over in those sticks oh, was, was tough. It was a riot. And uh, so this dude jumps in. He's like panicking and sweating and shaking. Doesn't have shoes on. And uh, he'd gone a mile in very, very dense forest yeah. and jungle stuff. I don't know how. Yeah. And With you no guys, shoes. I was looking at you guys while I was filming. Cause I was filming, videoing all this, and I was I was in the front of the boat looking back, and you, all of you guys are looking this way, and I just looked over my left shoulder, and he's just back in the trees, just like this little tiny. He's wearing that blue sweatshirt, so you could see him. But yeah, I'm like, hey, there he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, so, he, he was dance dance for He would have been so screwed. Oh yeah, because yeah. he was out that. in the middle of the island. Yeah, he wasn't on the bank. He was on an yeah, island. They, 
yeah, I yeah. don't know how they would have done that. That was rough. We did rescue him when uh, we took him out to his boat. He offered us um, some sabalo. Some sabalo. He was... He was throwing gill nets for uh, the bait fish, but we saw Dorado in there. So his yeah. whole livelihood was just floating down the river. Yeah. Catching fish. Yeah. yeah. So he jumps in and we're we're like, hey, uh, maybe try starting that before we let you go because <laughs> he would have been right screwed. Up. But you'll see that whole interaction on the video. When's that video coming out? That one should drop as soon as That's, we have another... People are going to be listening to this podcast. By the, the time future, this is so uploaded, yeah. you go to our YouTube yeah. channel. This whole video will be on there. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, yeah. Again, reach out to us. There are lots of different ways to get in touch with us. Uh, email me at cheech at flyfishfood.com. Shoot us a message through social media. Call a shop, whatever you need to. Uh, we want to take you to Argentina with us. It's it's a pretty special part of what we do here at Fly Fish Food. Um, and these guys set fly fishing. It's like it's the best accommodations yeah, I've ever experienced. They're really, on really trip, good at so. what they do. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. That's it. Till next time. Brig, we need more animal sounds out of you next time. <laughs>